And a lot of people say to me, oh, yeah, but Newcastle paid your wages when I was in jail. And this is this is a, 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 an exclusive for you, but they never. I was not paid, not that I wanted to be, but I was not paid. I was also um, given a contract from, I think it was Dennis Wise at the time, saying if I didn't sign... Um, a renegotiated deal on a lot less money than what I was on that they would sack me um, and that had come from Mike Ashley who obviously controls the club so they basically give me an ultimatum that if I didn't sign this contract on a fifth of the money I was on they were going to sack me um, I was sitting in a jail cell at the time so I had no real um, power. no real yeah. power I had to either do it or, or not do it as principled as I am I said to um the guy who was my agent at the time I'm not signing it fuck him I'll, I'll, I'll let them sack me I'll, I'm quite confident I'll come out of here and get back to the player I was so I, I, it, that was nothing against the football club that was the fact that I was getting in my opinion um, railroaded into doing something I didn't want to do he got a copy of the contract from Wise um, that he was meant to bring into, into Walton Prison for me to sign he actually took it to his solicitor in London and the solicitor put it in a safe and legally they were bound they either had to sack me or keep me on the contract I was on they couldn't renegotiate the similar length of deal at, 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 you know, with lower money so once he phoned them up and told them about the, the FA's rules and regulations in terms of contracts and the fact that he had this contract which had proven they were trying to renegotiate they couldn't then sack me um, and from that moment on I was never you know a lot of the questions I had for Derek Lambias were well hang on a minute you tried to do this to me when I was having a bad time so did you think that now I'm now I'm playing really well like this is nothing against the club this was a personal issue they in my opinion they tried to fuck me when I was at a low time and then yet they were demanding loyalty from me for three years down the line when I was playing well and I was like well hang on a minute there's got to be you know there's some balance here you can't be you know the way you've been with me and he and Derek was saying oh that's not me that was Dennis Wise that was this that was that at the end of the day at that football club Mike Ashley's the Ayatollah you know nothing happens without him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing happens without his say so. So, in my opinion, and it, you know, it came from Mike. No decision at the club was made without Mike's knowledge, and he must have signed off on it to say, "Yeah, go and do that." Um, so that was always there in the background. So it was a lot. There's a lot more. I mean, there's millions of stories for other days about what they got up to. But no, I'm not. But it, I'm not it's, it's interesting because my impression as a football fan was <laughs> Joey Barton left Newcastle because he's caused some trouble. And what you've just said in the last five minutes, you know, completely puts a different perspective. Yeah, but don't forget that. Newcastle as a playing squad last year. As a playing squad last year, Newcastle net were the only club in Premier League history not to sign a bonus sheet never happened it's unprecedented that a club did that we refused as a playing staff because they tried to railroad um, the players into signing a bonus sheet it fundamentally cost Chris Hutton his job in my opinion um, because Chris couldn't get us to sign the players bonus sheet Mike Ashley said he's got no control over the players he needs to go and I think that was his undoing obviously that happened over a period of time we had a great affiliation with Chris and as I say this is all my opinion and from snippets of information I've picked up um, Chris knew his, he was on borrowed time from that and there was a guy who in my opinion had kept the club together in a, you know, when they went down to the championship he had no budget you know he had obviously inherited the playing staff that was fragmented and disjointed and the guy handled him himself with nothing but dignity done a fantastic job with his, his, with a, a, a number of coaching staff again swimming against the tide in, in my opinion at boardroom level and got the club back into the Premier League which as most QPR fans will testament to is, is, is a fantastic you know it's not an easy league to win you look at it this year there's seven eight teams could win it mm. but Newcastle won it at a canter yeah um, so just sorry going back to the original question um, so no I need to get I need oh, to sorry. get this off my chest no, carry, on, carry, carry on, on go on sorry, go on go on, go on. Go on. Carry on. so what happened was they got rid of Chris Hewton, um and obviously I, I, I felt the way they'd done it they just could have had themselves with a little bit more dignity and it was disappointing and I felt aggrieved by it at the same time we refused to sign the bonus sheet so they, their opinion was 
even though every single club in the Premier League history since 1992 had had these arrangements in place they decided that we were paid workforce which they probably have an argument they thought we were sports direct and that we should do what the subordinates at, at sports direct do forgetting that you're dealing with 20 odd egos probably 10 self-sufficient men who were in a position to make you know a number of different judgments and um, um, myself Kevin Nolan Alan Smith Steve Harper and Andy Carroll probably the you know the bigger name players at the time advised the playing staff because we were the head of the players committee not to sign the bonus sheet um, obviously that filtered back to boardroom level it's no coincidence that I got sold well I got given away um, Andy Carroll was sold um, Kevin Nolan was sold Steve Harper as you know fantastic servant for the football club has been forced to go on loan and made his position made untenable and Alan Smith told he's going to train with the reserves for the rest of his days and they don't want him anywhere near the football club so for me it's all about power and control like they're running the football club and you know it's going really well for them at the minute but I think that's more a testament to the players and the fans and also to the manager I think the manager's been different class and um I just wouldn't like to go to work and work for those two um, cretins. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've got a great affiliation with the football club and really hope they do well. And you know, always look for the results. And, and I can't wait to go back to St James Park. It's one of the you know great places to play to play football in this country.